I just love how you can read something from 3000 years ago, 2000 years ago. And it, and it feels like it was written yesterday or today and, and applicable today. So this one's great. Welcome to the Happily Different Podcast, Thursday 13 edition. Uh, I'm your host, Ryan Jaskowitz. Uh, and on Thursdays, uh, or every other Thursday, we bring you uh, one topic or idea that we tackle uh, either just myself or with an expert um, in 13 minutes or less. So uh, I thought uh, I'd try something new today and share uh, my quarterly reading list with you guys. Um, I love reading. I love getting book recommendations from people. So I thought I'd pay it forward. And hopefully there's a couple books here that uh, either inspire you or or, uh, or change your life in some way, hopefully. Um, uh, like I said, I love reading. I think it's, I think it's uh, one of the greatest things you can do, uh, to further yourself and, and for your mental health and all sorts of things. And I've also never, never met somebody successful that didn't read. So, um, without further ado, I'll jump right into my list here. Uh, here's, uh, here's all the books, uh, from Q1 here, if you can see them, if you're watching on video, uh, but I'll list all these books in the, in the show notes and give you guys links to them and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so first book of the, of the quarter that I read was called a hundred years of solitude by, uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Um, I really like this book. I'm not typically a non, uh, an, uh, a fiction reader, I should say. Um, and this is very fiction, um, written, uh, many, many years ago, uh, this author won the Nobel Prize in literature in 1982, uh, but it's always been a, a sort of a classic that I've seen people read. And um, I just thought to myself, I need to read this thing. And it's been sitting on my bookshelf for, for a couple of years now. And this January, I got to it and started reading it. It was fantastic. Really interesting story. Uh, uh, very strange in parts, um, but definitely an, an enthralling read if you give it uh, if you give it a chance and you kind of uh, let yourself uh, fall into to it and, uh, and experience the book rather than trying to, uh, uh, glean some information from it. Like I typically do, uh, with my nonfiction book. So it, it took a lot for me to kind of get into the book, but once I was into it, uh, I was all about it. So that's book number one, uh, for the, uh, for the quarter, uh, book number two is called talking to strangers here by Malcolm Gladwell. Uh, it's the second time I've read this book. Um, we actually do a book club here at 12, five capital. And this was one of the books we chose as part of our book club. Um, candidly speaking, not many people on my team liked the book. Um, I love this book. I love basically anything Malcolm Gladwell writes uh, is, is fantastic. I love the way he looks at things, the way that he looks at life and, and experiences and, and uh, events in history that we may not know the whole story to. And uh, so we read this as a team. And, uh, like I said, not everybody loved it. And part of that was that I don't think there's a specific solution to the problem of talking to strangers, which this book covers. So it's covering all the pre, uh, uh, misconceptions and incorrect preconceived notions we have about how we interact with strangers in our lives and, and people we don't know and all the challenges that come with that, um, definitely points out all the challenges and, and shows you examples of that. But, uh, very few times are there. Um, uh, or, or does, he doesn't, he doesn't give you a specific solution for how to fix those things. And I think that was part of the challenge, uh, for my, for my team. Um, I also highly recommend and, and the whole team recommended listening to it on audiobook. Uh, they do a fantastic job with their audiobooks. They, uh, they bring in clips of actual conversations and it feels more like a podcast than it does an audiobook. So I highly recommend that talking to strangers. Third book of the quarter uh, is, uh, it's got a bit of a morbid title, so beware. It's called I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy. And this is a memoir uh, by Jeanette McCurdy about sort of becoming a child star, uh, what that involved, the challenges with her family, with her mother specifically. And it's just a super... Um, uh, sad book in some spots, uh, positive in other spots and, uh, sort of revealing about most people's families and, and how we grow up and things like that. So I just really enjoyed it. And it's got super easy, approachable chapters, you know, three or four pages long. So you can knock out a chapter every, you know, every few minutes and, and, and kind of come back to it and know where you're at and you don't have to delve too deep into one big chapter. So I highly recommend this book. It's, 
you know, on every bestseller list. So this isn't the greatest recommendation in the world or, or the most, uh, unique recommendation I should say, but I really enjoyed the book. So, uh, go out and get that one. Um, the fourth book, uh, of the quarter was a book called the tools by Phil Stutz. Um, if any of you have Netflix, um, you may have seen, uh, there was a documentary called Stutz by Jonah Hill, uh, the actor Jonah Hill. And, um, he did a documentary on his therapist and psychologist named Phil Stutz. And I just love the documentary. I loved his, uh, the therapist's approach towards both, uh, psychology and treating patients and things like that. And so I went out and got his book right away, which they talk about, um, in the, in the, in the uh, documentary. And it's just, it's super short. You can see here, but uh, super approachable tools that you can use in your day to day life to kind of uh, combat anxiety, stress, depression, things like that. And just like I said, really approachable, really digestible and and uh, high, highly, highly recommend this. If if, you, if you're into this sort of stuff, if you're struggling with anxiety or depression or um or stress or anything like that. I think this little book here can go a long way towards uh, easing that, uh, that pain you might have. So that was my fourth book tools by Phil Stutz. Um, my fifth book uh, of the quarter was discipline is destiny by Ryan holiday. Ryan holiday is one of my favorite authors. Uh, and not just because we share the same first name. Um, I've loved all of his stuff since, uh, since obstacle is the way, uh, he writes typically, if you don't know Ryan holiday, he writes about, uh, the Stoics, uh, Stoicism in general, and makes it, uh, more approachable in, in sort of in bite-sized chunks for people that don't want to go read the classics like meditations by Marcus Aurelius or things like that. So, um, what this is, is this is a, one of the books in his series on the Stoic virtues. And, uh, another one is called cult. Uh, courage is calling. And I think there's a couple, a few others that, uh, have been released or are due to be released. But this one's specifically about discipline and how, uh, discipline can obviously make life easier in a lot of ways and, um, how it, uh, how it pertains to the Stoics and Stoicism. And it's just, again, really easy chapters to read, you know, maybe three or four pages long. Um, you can knock them out bit by bit throughout the day, uh, throughout your week, but I really highly recommend this one, uh, you know, Discipline is destiny, the po destiny, the power of self-control. Uh, we all want a little more control in our lives. And uh, this helps you understand the tools to be able to do so. And uh, just highly recommend this one. And last but not least, this is a daily read for me, also by Ryan Holiday and his uh, writing partner, Stephen Hanselman. It's called The Daily Stoic. So I'm very into uh, the Stoics and Stoicism and all their writings. I just, I just love how you can read something from 3,000 years ago. 2000 years ago and it and it feels like it was written yesterday or today and, and applicable today. So this one's great. This one is uh, a, basically a daily read and each day has a date in it. I'll, I'll flip and show for those of you that are looking on camera. Uh, it's got uh, a date on it. So here's April 29th, let's say. And there's a, uh, a specific uh, stoic um, writing or, or excerpt or something from one of the old stoic classics. And then he takes, uh, just a few ch uh, paragraphs to explain what they were trying to say and how it's applicable to today's, uh, uh, a day today's time and, and, and all that. So, uh, highly recommend this. This is just a great one to have by your bedside or at your desk. Um, flip into it, get your book, get, get your reading in for the day with one page uh, and it'll go a long way to making life a lot easier. So, um, that is the, uh, like I said, reading list for Q1, working on some, some big ones, uh, some big hefty ones, uh, this quarter already. So I'm not sure I'll, uh, I'll, I'll have as many books next quarter, but I thought it'd be a fun share. So, um, it, it, I'd love to hear from you guys. If you have any book recommendations selfishly, that's good for me. Cause I can, uh, add some books to my, to my reading list. And I'd love to hear if you've either read these books or, um, or if any of these books after you read them, uh, uh, we're good. And if you enjoyed them and, uh, hopefully we can do this, uh, next quarter as well. So thank you for your time. Uh, once again, I appreciate everyone listening. And if you've gotten any value out of this podcast at all, uh, I just ask that you maybe share it with one person. It really goes a long way towards, uh, encouraging, uh, 
us to continue this podcast and, and help us realize if we're giving value to people or not. So if you've gotten any value, I, I, I encourage you and ask you to share it with it with one, at least one person you haven't shared it with yet. So uh, I think I have record time here. I'm in under 13 minutes. I'm under 10 here. So thank you guys for your time. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day and we'll talk to you soon. Take care. Take care.